Hello, everybody. How are you, Ben? So today, uh, our talk is uh, what is real and what is not real. You would you take red pill or black pill? If I, uh, blue pill. If I say that, many of you may be familiar. But that's just a movie. So don't take 100% as correct. But it's showing as a little direction. Okay. So why we choose this topic? Because have many reasons. The what is most we familiar with is Since we born, whatever, whatever we have habit, that is familiar. Another way of saying the culture we born, what everybody taught us what the society taught us, what everyday life told us. This is the only true truth we know. So therefore, even those people think they are Buddhist or they are Christian or any religion, religious or even they think they are atheist, whatever, Mostly, we are stuck with our culture and our limitation. Even you think you are 100% a Buddhist or Christian or Muslim, Islam or whatever, it is Hindu, there's so many things just culture is, let's say Buddhist today, the purpose of we preparation is for Buddhist course, Buddhist, Buddhist basics. So we're going to talk that. Therefore, let's say today, say uh, more Buddhist, Anybody think I am a Buddhist, 100% sure? But still, many of them just culture. Many of them just our limitation. Not necessarily truth. That means everything we experience we think is the true is not really true. Why we have to know this? 
if we just be satisfied cultural Buddhist or cultural spirituality or very limited spirituality, if you satisfied, then it's okay. It, it is not zero benefit. but it is limit. So if we want the maximum possible, if we want the maximum aim, then the most important, we have to examine what is true? What is not true? What is real? What is not real? Is not saying we have just one talk or few courses, then you know everything. It's, it doesn't mean that, but if we go this direction, then whether you want to be Buddhist or whether you want to be atheist or whether you want to be any religious or, or you don't want to be any religious, you want to be spiritual, either way, no matter if we reflect in and examine what is real or not real, I think extremely important for everybody, no exception, no exception. That is why we pick up this talk today. That means maybe is nothing new for you. For some people, maybe not new, but is a reminder, definitely a reminder. That's why we choose this talk. So let's say, why important to know what is real and what is not real? The universal problem, doesn't matter you are religious or non-religious, non-believers, doesn't matter. The universal problem is ignorance and attachment. Ignorance means so many things, but the main ignorance, we don't know exactly what we're doing. and we don't know why we are here. And we don't know what is meant to be. We even don't know, we means, I, I'm saying we means the majority of average people. We don't know even what is the meaning of the human life? I mean, everybody maybe have some kind of, not everybody, but some people have some kind of meaning. But it's like uh, 
sand, uh, how do you say, sand house, unconcrete sand house, very easily fell. That kind of meaning, but there's nobody has concrete, solid, indestructible meaning of the life. So that is a universal problem. But we have attachment for so many things. So what the attachment a problem is, the reality is our future and everything is unpredictable. We are ignorance, we don't really know. We have many plans, but based on ignorance, we don't really know we have time for those plans. Yet, We have plans and attachment. So then we have so much expectations from the attachment. So then things come, you have to face, you didn't expect. Things you didn't expect. And we lose many things you don't want to lose. All of them, because the problem is the ignorance and attachment. This is a universal problem. Doesn't matter you are religious or non-religious, believe or not believers. That's what I'm saying. But what the root? what the root of ignorance and the attachment. We don't know what is real and not real. Because all we think is real is not really real. So that we're going to discuss. First, think something easy. Remembering when you are a child, you were a child. What is the most meaningful things for you? Toys or whatever? Is this most valuable things you see as perceive are the most valuable? And you have attachment on this. When become a teenage, not anymore. You want something else. You all know when you are teenage, what is the most important for you? I don't have to say it. You know it. Later on, is that same important, the same truth stay with you? No. Those valuables not value anymore. And those real for you that time, but not real anymore. Yeah. And then middle age, old age, everything changes. Changes the, your perception, your reality. When you are changes your perception, your reality are different. Your values different. All different. That's easy, easy to think of.
and then think about the different culture. Come from different cultures, you have different perception and different values. Somebody's terrible things, the other culture think is wonderful. For instance, this modern time, let's say this modern time, the majority think have to be skinny, slim, the fat is everyone don't want. But I heard that there's some cultures, some areas. The fat is most important. And before married, you have to send the fat in the room. And a few months, you have to be try very hard to fat. Because the before wedding have to be very fat. If it's not fat, uh, then it's not beautiful anymore. So you guys, the majority, the modern cities, pe modern city people definitely think the opposite. I even remember when I, my childhood time, fat people, people think, oh, wow, so great. That's I remember. So which one is the truth? Huh? The truth is a relative. Is there's no absolute truth, especially the beauty. Okay, that's the easy part. Now we're going to a little bit harder. Between philosopher and non-philosopher, again, the truth is not the same. That also easy, let's say. The in Buddhism, the school of Jitamata, he did, I think they did very well. What they're saying is, everything we see, the ocean and the land, the people's body, buildings, cities, everything, everything external, they say not exist at all. Only true is our mind. Mind made up this. Mind Pierce for the mind. They are saying that. Long time ago, almost 3,000 years ago. You got it? The mind appears for external and then mind. Let's say the marrow. reflecting inside the, the object, but it's not a real object, it's mirror itself. Similarly, everything is mind made up. Mind made up also, you have to remember, is not your mind just made up now. 
Okay, if the only man made up is, why is so strong? Why is so solid? It's not only this person, but everybody agree this rock is so solid. How can we believe? You can think that, but they're saying, is you have similar habit, I have similar habit, come beginning less life times, the habit we call karmic propensity, build up that. That's why for you is very solid and almost indestructible. But the truth is only from the mind. So this is a proven from the modern science now. You guys, sure, definitely more than you know, you guys know much more than me. But maybe you didn't thought about some, some of you. Some, some of you already thought about. So there is no real truth. The modern science say the colors is not exist. Only eyes, the lights are reflecting. So that means color is only in your eyes in a simple way. Simple way, the color is only in your eyes, not the outside. But for us is so true, appears very true. Yeah? We painted differently than they, they always there, Galo. Is in Jaipur, but we have to agree this, why? Because the truth Buddhism say, Buddha say, not one. You can structure a billion levels of truth or trillion levels of truth, but we don't have to go that complicated. At least we level are relatively true true, relatively real, and absolute real. So today we're not talking about absolute truth. Today we're talking about relative truth. Relative truth means if we challenge it, if we analyzed, then is the everything we experience is not real truth, not real. It is just appears for you real. We have to distinguish a, a Appear, appearance and the real totally different. Let's say sound. Is sound does it truly exist? You know, 
every so many people like music so many variety of music and some people obsessed the music i think so many people obsessed about music except me <laughs> even i know so many monks they are obsessed the music but not me but the sound is it true the answer the scientifically say no there's no such thing sound sound is only our ears how you say our ear there's ability easy to how do you say vibrate or easy to move than any other pins then we think then appears that sound is it kind of unbelievable because there's so many different sound so many diversity sound melodious huh? but all of them illusion all of them illusion that means if 1000 kilometers away if somebody making incredible music no somebody let's say let's say somebody damn what do you call it yeah deaf deaf person doing the music would you say the sound there or no the answer is no there's no sound why because sound is only illusion of our ear only this uh, particles moving that's it If there's a huge rock falling, there's nobody have ears, sentient beings there. Is that huge rock falling have sound? No. The answer is no. Only moving some particles. But our air some kind of ability to make illusion of that movement so that's the same thing everybody have their own truth depend our perception limit So on truth means not really truth, but illusionary truth. So therefore, dogs can smell and he hear much more than human the sharks can smell one drop of blood far far away in the ocean why 
because everybody has a different perception. So they, this interdependent, you know, for us, Mars way of one blood drop means nothing, zero. All of them, why like this, is only interdependent appearance or illusion. Is not real. There's so many things scientifically can prove, but also simple way we know. For instance, when or anything fast and slow, a different shape we see. Car or anything go very fast and slow, we see different. Even the road, you go very fast, slow, everything different we see. So that means there is no such thing real, only depending the limitation of our perception. Totally rely on that. So therefore, lions and owls, owls can see not time. The darkness is not dark for them. All of them, what we have to understand is interdependent appearance or illusion. Or you can say truth, but the truth means a temporary interdependent truth. There's no real truth. There's no real. That's why you can't say this is real, this is totally real, this is not totally real. Even 7 billion people on this planet agree the red is red, but it's not. The darkness is, you can't see, it, they agree, but the owl say no. There's no darkness. I can see everything. So what we're saying is, we're not denying our human perception there is no red, there's no color, there's no shape. We're not denying that. But we have to accept this illusion the same time appears true for us. And it, this illusion also makes differences. Your color favors, color preference, your music preference. Everything makes it different for us. But we think take this is a real truth. But there is no real truth. So therefore, the dream and day times reality and the dream times reality, we have to see as equal. 
we have to see as equal. You think, oh, that's not equal. Dream is so short time. And the life is very long. Uh -huh. Firstly, short and long doesn't make true. That is not definition of truth and, and truth. But also think about even in dream, you can take very long. You can dream, you can, you can dream years. You sleep the only few hours, but you can dream that many years as well. And also we have to understand When we, dream is not real only when we wake up. That time we are 100% agree is not real. But during the dream time, for us same as awakening state. Equal. So that means we have to understand there is, should be awakening from this life. You may think, oh, I don't want to wake. Why? Because you are touched. That is a lie. That's the whole point I'm talking. Should we attach? I shouldn't touch. What is the problem if we are touched? What is benefit not attached? The benefit is you have to transcend this life whether you like or not. So if you have attachment, then is greatest suffering, turns a greatest suffering. But if you have no attachment, that means free. <laughs> you are free. Free attachment means are free from suffering. But what does it make less attachment is the only way we have to learn this or our perception is not real. That doesn't mean you don't have to eat food or get rest. It doesn't mean even you don't have to have income or work and love aims. But just a little reduce attachment. Just <coughs> reduce our fixation. is tremendous a benefit, tremendous a benefit. 
whether you believe religion or not, whether you want to be atheist or not, doesn't matter. Even you are atheist, still, if you have less attachment, it is advantage, huge advantage for this life. You have an, no attachment means doesn't mean you throw away everything. You waste everything. You are thoughtless. No. Just be a little bit flexible. Just a little bit open mind. Not too tight, not too uptight. Just a little bit flexible. Anything happens. Okay, of course. Of course happens. Accept the reality. It is very simple one way, but our mind is too busy the other way. So we made bad habit. That's all. So all this analyzing, everything is not true. Just illusion is just loosen up. Just like children break some more toy or break the mud put in the house, it's big dare for them and cry for us nothing because they are so uptighted on that toy house that's all the differences between children and us only differences we don't have uptighted on that one but the child do The Buddha, a body sarvas, and us, what is the difference is we are so uptight, me and mine. But body sarvas not uptight. It. Even you are body sarva. You can be billionaires, no problem. Multi billionaires, no problem. The bodies are a mid multi billionaires, and the normal multi billionaires, what they do differently, one have uptight it, one not uptight it. Why? Because one knows this is illusion. One doesn't know this is illusion. That's all. And then why, why even bother the Bodhisattva make a multi-billion? Because only benefit for the illusioner money benefits the illusioner's beings. Huh? 
That's the only reason. So that means we don't have to deny what appear for us. You don't have to give up your religious food or your religious drink, beer, ice cream, anything. You don't have to give up. You still can enjoy. But can you a little bit lose the uptightness? Everything works bit by bit. If you think I have to this completely change the overnight, that unrealistic expectation. So it doesn't help. So this is a concept uh, Jita Mata explained so well. They call three natures. The first one they call kanta. Kanta means imputational. This is a traditional way of explaining very, very complicated. I mean, but I can simplify. Imputation remains, uh, let's say, this cup. This cup, how many languages we have named differently? But still, everybody knows it is for drink. But the names are very different, but for them, for English, we say cup, then definitely have to be this. Cannot be, cannot be this one. Cannot be cup, cannot, impossible. But another language, maybe this is a cup and this is glass. This is glasses. Possible. That part is imputational. It just made out. But everybody for uh, many languages, different names, but everybody doing this. And they know for this. Without language, that part. Compare imputational, made up name, this is true. But this is all true? No. Again, this is core independent truth. Relational truth or dependent truth. So you see, the name say relational truth or dependent truth. This, our mind think uh, for drink and we using all of them, same as the color, shape, sound, we think is real, but is not. Same situation. No different. So whatever the truth, that lever, only if you not expecting other lever, it works only on that lever. If there is a little smell, humans can't detect. The other animals, for them is the truth, for us nothing. The same thing. 
all this, all our planet, all this, all solid, real truth, everything for us, for bodhisattvas, for who realize yogis, for them is like we are just small children. We making toys and we fighting for toys. We crying on toys. For them is like that. This is very important to know. If you figure more and analyze more scientifically, you bring this science research, the evidence, science evidence. I mean, science evidence means is also, you have to remember, is not ultimate truth. But so far, science discovered so many truths we cannot even dream. That's why it sounds important. <laughs> okay, but it's still temporary. If you compare that, what Buddha said nearly 3,000 years ago, and this modern time, scientists find out. If you machine all of them, then is we must convince. We don't have to convince, but there is a benefit to convince because of our attachment. The root of suffering. How attachment provide, produce all types of suffering? We can discuss more next time. So today I didn't have time to prepare at all. Maybe not very structured, but um, do we should have questions? Um, up to you. Or somebody share something more, you know, something similar is more clarify what I said. If somebody want to share this, I think we should welcome, but it can share. If anyone has something that they'd like to share or a question, you can um, put it in the comments or in the Q&A is the best if it's not in English, as well as on Facebook. And we will add them. And, and bring them up for Rinpoche. This teaching today is in advance of a course that Rinpoche is kindly giving over six weeks called What's Real. Uh, the What's Real course is going to help us look at the foundations of Buddhism, especially understanding um, karma, our perception, the mind, how we see the world, and what to rely on. So uh, that course was scheduled to start next week, but we are going to delay the start by another week. So I'll email something out about that. Uh, we've had a lot of success in the past year and now have regularly uh, up to 13 languages. As you can see today, there's 10. So we've had to do some upgrades to our website to be able to accommodate all these languages. That's why we're delaying it a week. Um, let's see what people have to say. Okay, so for a lot of thank you Rinpoche's. 
Let's see, anything other than thank you. Um, um, Rinpoche, were you basically saying that we should not plan too much because then we'll be uptight too much if we're trying to achieve something? Yes, I think uh, uh, all uh, our existing things, you know, uh, we think is a true things. We should, uh, as much as we can loosen and aware, this is, we think, reality. This is, we think is valuable, but there is other possibilities. <laughs> we just aware of this and prepare that could be happened. You know, it's not just happened, but also uh, it is, you know, could be another reality. Uh, if this way is much better because all the uh, spiritually developed people, they are like that and very uptight and always want the best and the best and working so hard on that is not the winners uh, when it come to the spirituality. Is uh, more relaxed. Why are you relaxed? Because you're not so uptight. Because you know there's other possibilities. This is just one appearance, but there is other possibilities. So therefore is, uh, you know, the ghost, people see ghost and God, angel, everything is possible. But is not everybody have to see the same thing. You know, what does the Christians see and what the Buddhists see are different, but do the same job. I mean, you have some comfort, you know, but if is a truth is only one, and then it cannot, uh, should not have a, a different appearances. So like that. Hey, there's a couple of you asking if this video is available on Facebook or somewhere else you can watch again. You can watch this again on the Zokton Facebook channel. It's also on, will be on Rinpoche's YouTube channel. And we usually put the recordings of all his public talks on SoundCloud under Zokton as well. So it will be up for you to re-listen for those who want to re-listen. Um, Rinpoche, so you mentioned that sound is an illusion um, and that it's uh, related to interdependent with our ears and, and other things. So Isabel is wondering, when we recite mantras, um, if their sound is an illusion, do they have any results? Yes. Even our food is illusion, but we have a result. Huh? Even our dream is illusion, but we are in fact in the dream, in that level. The same thing, the mantra, Yes, they said tremendous a power. Even quantum physics, they are agreeing because this mantra makes incredible vib vib vibration in quantum physics level. Um, so Rinpoche, in the What's Real course, do you plan 
to teach multiple ways of looking at the relative truth? Or are you just going to focus on the mind only school that you have described as what feels the most right for you? Oh, we can, um, we can look multiple ways, uh, but definitely we, we come across uh, we we uh, uh, we will find out which one is more uh, convincing. So Rinpoche, when we talk about colors, if we talk about the colors related to the elements in Buddhism. Do these colors have any relationship or do they come from some enlightened perception? Do they still have some relationship to the full truth or a limited truth? They still have what? I think they're wondering if they're still, if they're part of the limited truth or the ultimate truth. You know, when we say, um, you know, space oh. and this related to this Buddha and this color, they're wondering if, if that's like from some more enlightened, per, more like higher dimension of perception, or if it's just also still part of the illusion, or how is this, that? There is a relative truth. When we say, oh, Buddha, this Buddha is this color, this, 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 this related with this is still on the path not the, the goal, not the ultimate truth, not the, uh, yeah. So the ultimate truth is cannot be or yellow, then cannot be white or black. It's not like that. Is the ultimate truth is everything, possible everything, white, same time black. But that's impossible, that's impossible in this illusion of truth. Because this illusion of truth is uptight uh, realm anyway, so that's why cannot be black and white. <laughs> so all Buddha colors, everything we talk about, that's relative level, still on the path. Still is a benefit. I said, remember today many times, it, it is one level of truth, only work is one level, but not other. Okay, the same thing, just remember dream, only work is in the dream. Huh? Let's say you pay the debt in the dream, you happy in the dream, or you win lottery in the dream, you very happy, but that only works in the dream. You wake up, you have no lottery. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. Only works at that level. Um, Rinpoche, assuming that everything that we see it's a projection of the mind. And what we're seeing and depends on our senses, what causes this perception? What causes our perception? Yes, they're wondering what causes the perception. Many causes. Simple way, karmic perception and karmic propensity. So that's why we have to talk next time. We have to understand the karma very scientifically. We have to understand logically. So, yeah, karma means action. There is nothing in this world without action. So that's why the karma is innumerable. But then we always, as long as we can direct, 
the right karma, then we can change anytime. Okay? So that's what we're going to talk later. <laughs>